up guys welcome back to my channel today we're looking at question three of the january 2020 reset paper and this is mathematics all right so let's get right into it the question says the diagram below shows a hexagonal prism there are two imperative words here the first word is hexagon which means six and prism meaning that it has a uniform cross section now looking at the diagram here you can see if we call this the bottom and we call up here the top notice that they're the same so it's uniform right throughout from top to bottom. All right. Now it says complete the following statement. The prism has dash faces. Good. And there are several ways to go about this question. The fact that it's a hexagonal prism, it means going around, you're actually going to have six faces going around. If you call this the bottom, that would make one face. That's seven. And the top would make a next face, which would make it eight faces. All right. And of course, you know, the faces are our flat surfaces. All right, it has dash edges. Now, the edges are where any two faces meet. So, this is one edge here. This is the next edge here. That's the next edge. This is the next edge. And this is the next edge. And once again, if we were to count going around the hexagon, you would notice that you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six edges going around. Down here, you also have one, two, three, four, five, six, six edges as well. And since up here, which we call it up, would also be the same as down here because it's a uniform cross section, you'd also have six edges as well. So in all, we actually have 18 edges. What about the vertices? The vertices represent the points where the edges meet. So if we notice, the edges meet on this face, if we call this the bottom, and on this face, which is the top. So we'd actually have one, two three four five six vertices down here and of course because the top here which is the same thing as down here is actually a mirrored effect because it's a uniform cross section you'd also have six vertices at the top so in all you have 12 vertices sorry so that is how you get your three marks there all right we're now going to be looking at question 3b of the past paper and it says a sports club owns a field PQRS in the shape of a quadrilateral. A scale drawing of this field is shown below. One centimeter represents 10 meters. So what's actually saying here is that for this sports ground, one centimeter on this diagram would actually represent 10 meters on the actual sports ground. All right. In the following parts, show all your construction lines. The field is to be divided with a fence from P to the side RS. So here's P and here's the side RS. So there's going to be a fence running from P up to any point and RS. So that different sports can be played at the same time. Each point on the fence is the same distance from PQ as from PS. Here is PQ and here is PS. Now when you draw your fence, each point on that fence should be equidistant from PQ and PS. It says use a straight edge and a compass only construct the line representing the fence now of course there's only one way we can actually achieve a fence that would be both equidistant from pq and from ps and that is what we call an angular bisector so i'm going to have to bisect the angle qps or we can call it spq now how do we do that now we place a compass point at p and we're going to swing an arc that cuts both ps and pq so let's go right ahead. All right. So that is my arc. Now I'm going to move the compass point to the point where it cuts PQ. So let's see what happens here. So I'm going to put the compass point here. And I'm going to swing an X arc. So there we go. I'm also going to put the compass point at the point where it cuts PS, which is right here. And I'm going to swing an X arc cutting the first arc there we have it now what we need to do is to draw a straight line from p to this point where these two arcs intersect so let's go ahead and go for our ruler tool so here we go so we're going to put the ruler here at p and we're going to ensure it's lined up with the intersection of the two arcs right, so we'll go up a little there and then we're going to use the rule arm or pencil to draw a straight line from P to the side RS. So let's go right ahead and see what happens. So 
So once we are finished drawing our straight line, then we can go ahead and remove the ruler here. So that is what it looks like. So that's a straight line from P to the side RS. Good. See, so you'd have gotten all your marks there. Now notice that I use a different line, a different color for my construction lines because your construction lines are actually supposed to be done. Now part two of the question says, write down the length of this fence in meters. So this is what I do. We're going to take the ruler and we're going to put it at P and measure the fence here. So if I'm seeing correctly, this is about 8.3 centimeters. It's 8.3 centimeters on the diagram, right? But we know that one centimeter represents 10 meters in real life. So since we know it's 8.3, all right? And let me just do a little calculation here. 8.3 and we know that it's 1 to 10 meters so what I would have to do is to multiply this 8.3 meters by 10 so if I multiply 8.3 by 10 I'm gonna end up with 83 meters all right and that's the actual length of the fence on the ground the 8.3 is what I have on the map as a part of my scale drawing and that is how we approach a question like this. We now move to part C of question three. And it says a quadrilateral PQ, RS, and its image P prime, Q prime, R prime, S prime are shown on the grid below. So here is what we call the object PQ, RS. And here's what we call the image P prime, Q prime, R prime, S prime. And it says write down the mathematical name for the quadrilateral PQRS. Now there's one thing that is distinctive about this particular quadrilateral, and that is that it has only one pair of parallel sides. And there's only one kind of quadrilateral with only one pair of parallel sides, and that is what we call a trapezium. So we're just gonna write it right here. Some persons also refer to it as a trapezoid. So whichever one works. Now part two says that PQRS is mapped onto P prime, Q prime, R prime, S prime by an enlargement which has scale factor K about the center C and the coordinate of the center is AB. Using the diagram above, determine the value of A, B, and K. So K is the scale factor. A and B represents the coordinate of the center of enlargement. All right. Now Final center of enlargement is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is to draw a straight line connecting any two corresponding points. What do I mean by that? P would correspond to pre -pri P prime and Q would correspond to Q prime. So I could draw a straight line from P to P prime and I extend that line. And I could draw a straight line from Q to Q prime and we also extend that line. We know wherever these two lines intersect, that is our center of enlargement so we're going to need our ruler tool so here we first we draw a straight line from p to p prime and we extend the line there we go so let me remove the ruler so you can actually see it that is my straight line and notice we put it in right there we're also going to draw a straight line from q to q prime and we're also going to extend this line as well so let's go right ahead and do it so we draw a straight line from q to Q prime, extend this, this line as well. Now let us remove the rule and see what happens. Now, if we look at a point of intersection of these two lines, well, my line is a bit off, but they would have actually intersect at this point here. Now let us look at our scale. Notice that I'm going up by one. So I have one, one, two, three. So that's minus three. And this is gonna be minus four right here in line. So that's minus four on the x-axis. And if we look at the y-axis, going up it's one. So this point here would actually be negative four to one. So let me just put this down here. So C would be negative four, one. So we could actually state that A is equal to negative four and B is equal to one. That would be my center of enlargement. What about my scale factor? Now, in order to compare your scale factor, what we simply need to look at is two corresponding sides. So if we were to look at the side P prime, Q prime, and we were to look at the side PQ, and note that it is the 
image, the side that we choose for the image, over the side for the object. So if I were to probably create a little formula here, let me just put it on the paper. So we are saying that K would be equal to, and this is the image length over the object length. And we can actually count the squares to determine what the length of P prime, Q prime is. So let me just write that as P prime, Q prime over PQ. All right. Let us count the squares to see. So this would be one, two, three. So P prime Q prime is three over the image, which is one unit. That's over one. So this is actually equal to three. So my scale factor is equal to three, which is K. And the center of enlargement is negative four, one. As you can see right here at this point.